All right, I'm here with Michael, and we are here at the Midland Antique Engine Association, and he is standing in front of his Thu Type O steam shovel. Before you guys ask where this came from, there's a little bit of pictures down here that show a little bit of that, but make sure you go back and see the first videos that I posted all the way from when Michael first found this, the whole story behind uh, discovering it to removing it from the lake bed. So that is all in the previous videos, and I will create a playlist full of all these videos as well. So Michael, first off, can you kind of just tell us a little bit about the progress? I know you attached the bucket this week, but how have things been going since last fall when the steam shovel was removed from the lake bottom? Uh, with the, getting two of the th three steam motors rolling over and they're just sitting on the floor now. Okay, I'm on. And I was able to track down a boiler. Uh, it's just a little bit shorter, but it's um, same diameter and everything else, and it needs just a little bit of work, but it's it'll it'll run this just fine. Other than that, we didn't. I didn't want to tear too much more apart on this machine because people probably really didn't know what it was sitting here to start with. And that's why I had uh, O'Brien sign make me up a sign put out in front of this to, so people could come by and see. So we're basically getting ready for a show that's coming up in July. Um, and then after that is when we're gonna, I'm gonna start tearing everything apart. I'm gonna get the boom back off, get the hoist off the center, and then get the center section pulled off. I wanna get the wheels pulled off. I wanna get the frame completely cleaned up and needle scaled all the dirt off it and we all want to get a coat of primer on it before winter and then I'll start working on getting the material that we need to so I can start doing repairing the sections as we need it. I know you've already got some of the materials for the house but can you tell about uh, how who has donated those materials and who all has donated to make this possible? Well I got yeah I gotta thank uh, Dan Keen and Bart Waters uh, Dan got me the, he had the logs and I made a donation to him through his charity for, for the wood. And Bart uh, was very gracious and uh, didn't charge me a lot to saw up all the wood. So I know it's kind of putting the uh, cart in front of the horse, but uh, I couldn't pass up the deal to get the wood already cut up. And so it's, it's there's more to me done to the wood, so I need to be tongue and groove and plain and stuff, but it's, at least I've got all the wood for the house. I've had a, steel company in Bay City, k &R Metal, that uh, has rolled uh, my arches already for my, for my beams for the roof. So I've got the angle iron already rolled for that. So I gotta thank them for working with me on that. So I got, got a lot of, there's still a lot of people that are, that are helping out that uh, that's, I'm very grateful for that, you know, to help me keep motivated on this project, which I, well, Will you be working out in the house simultaneously as removing the boom and the parts here, or will that be a next winter project? Uh, it, more than likely the house is gonna be, I'm gonna to try to make it more of a family thing, so probably in the springtime where my mom can come over, my brothers and sisters, um, uh, aunts, uncles, you know, if they wanna all come over and pitch in and you know, we'll just have a barbecue, and um, once I get all the steel structure stuff done, then we'll, then we'll throw the house together and have kind of a family get together, I thought that would be kind of a cool way to to build that. I know after the steam shovel was removed last fall, you went back out there and found a few other components. I know one of them was like a horse-drawn grater. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, there's also close to this shovel out there is, a, is an old horse-drawn, we believe it's a J.D. Adams horse-drawn grater, which is all cleaned up and it'll be on display here uh, for the, and then I've also found uh, axles and wheels for the carts that this possibly loaded and hitch and some other stuff that's out there and a, and a little bit of a rail so and pulled up some railroad ties and I'm gonna put all that stuff here on display and I've got my dear mother home with about 500 pictures on her table at home and she's making up photo albums and for, uh, for this so we can try to keep everybody up to date of what's going on and keep Keep some history logged on it. So 
So I know last we talked, you had the two stu steam engines rolling over. Were you able to get the third one roll over? I, and I, haven't, put, I haven't put it on the operating table yet. With every with workload and everything else, it's, there's always other stuff that's going on that, that we're gonna go on. But. but that one's in a little worse shape than the first two, or? It's, it's going to be in, because I pulled the head off of it and it is pitted and stuff like that, but it's, it is completely salvageable. So all three motors are, are good to go. Can you talk a little bit more about the show in July? I know you've hinted at it a little bit, but it's going to be here at the Midland Antique Engine Association. What time and what the dates are? Uh, it's always the second week of July. Um, I'm going to on my Facebook page. I will post more information on what's what's going on. So if you go to Wixom Lake Steam Shovel at Facebook, there we've also got uh, building a website, WixomLakeSteamShovel.com. And then I also got the domain name for Wixom Lake Steam Shovel at gmail.com. So if anybody wants to contact me or any other stuff, all the information go through that. And uh, with with your help, I hope to have a bunch of videos and everything else to put up on that. I presented Bob. I'll show you the picture, but I presented. I made up a two two photo albums or frames, picture frames. That's got a picture of both of us together and then his crane the way he found it and the way he does now then the way my crane was when we found it and just kind of as a joke I put down the bit down at the bottom of the you know as the picture's still loading and I told him I'll just keep sending him pictures as we as we go along and you can keep adding them to it so he was really really grateful for that so. I know I think you mentioned something about that Bob was actually missing a few pieces off his, his steam shovel that you were actually able to give to him from this so to make his complete and then you needed some pieces as yeah, well. Yeah, because up uh, up on here is an uh, is a mechanism that was part that was the automatic part of the shovel. So as the horizontal crowd would run back and forth, it would slide a bar back and forth and this had an arm come down and it would kick out the the motor, to re it was almost like a return to dig. You could just pull the handle and then the dipper stick would come back and stop or it'd go out to fully out and stop. So we looked when the crane was down there and didn't see anything. Then even when he was here, him and his grandson Tommy looked and they couldn't find nothing. Then we were power washing the one day and I took a hammer and I thought, well, what's this? And, and give it a tap and it come loose. And it's like, holy crap, I just found the missing piece. So. I took it down to him and we put it on his machine and I left it with them so they're going to duplicate that so now that makes because he's got the the few type O shovel like this and then he also has electric one with the horizontal crowd and both of those are missing that so this will make both of his machines complete and then all I got to do is just get a dimension of what the rod was from here to my motor to make mine complete so they will all be will all be complete. And another thing we stumbled across, uh, looking at his, because I believe his is a, a 1913 shovel, but there's so much difference between my lower half than his that we came to the conclusion that this is definitely an earlier, this is one of the earliest models of this, of this shovel because of the way that the, the carrier rollers are mounted up and they're all Babbitt bearing and not no eccentric adjustment on them. So, um, and the, to still to find the serial number plate would it'd be huge to find that. How big a bucket is on this steam this, shovel here? This has got a three quarter yard bucket on it. And Bob gave me a sheet on the crane of what this was able to produce. And with a crew of three running this machine, it could produce 45 to 50 yards an hour. So, I mean, if you compare that to today's date, but I mean, that, that's with a crew of three running this thing. You had one guy standing running it, one guy tending to the boiler, and then another guy on the ground tending to the, to keep it going. So it was just kind of like, wow, really, that, that was a lot. Now, I want to know a few of the nitty gritty details on the steam shovel that you would probably talk to Bob Kelly about, because I know a lot of people liked hearing the conversation between you and Bob. So. Anything interesting up here with any of the gears or the buckets that you want to point out? No, I mean, the, the, with the trying to find the chain, Bob actually took and welded. He, they sat in their shop and they built up each link. 
and made it back because they didn't really know what size chain it was to fit up in here and everything else. So his chain was not in that bad of shape. But he says, uh, he says, yeah, he says, uh, if you're going to do that, you better get a, a lot of people to help because you've got a lot of welding to do. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no, he was, um, we're, um, he, he, he's confident that, the, you know, this is a, a machine that can be rebuilt to make dig again. What's your timeline to make this dig again? I'm, I'm hoping five years. I thought it was nine years. I thought well, it was well, with the time it, it, with your, <laughs> it took you. <laughs> yep, the time it took me and Jessica to get married. Yeah, your house will be up before this. I, I sure hope so. Hopefully we're breaking ground in another month or so. But if I had this going, we'd be over there digging for you, making you a deal. <laughs> that would be awesome. Dig out the foundation of our house and dig us a nice pond. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Only take a couple years to do that too. Yeah, 45 yards an hour. Yeah. One scoop but, at a time. But no, it's uh, the actually the carriage part of it is only going to need a couple beams replaced. The 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 worst of the whole thing is going to be the boom. There's going to be a lot of stuff on there, but if I repair enough to you know to show it to run it, I mean, because it's not going to production, and just each year you do a little bit more, you do a little bit more, and you know eventually you'll have it have it going. So um. I'm still pretty stoked to keep on trucking on this project. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing find. And to close, anybody that's looking to send donations, should they send them directly to you or? If they, um, I'm working on, I'm probably going to get a, a GoFundMe and put it on my Facebook or a PayPal or something like that on my Facebook. And then there'll also be one on my uh dot com page so um, we're, we're going to go that way we're working on getting that set up right now um, as much as I wanted to you know ask for help but there's a lot of people that, are, that, that want to help so I, I, I need to do that for the people that want to help to be you know be part of this um, to let them have, give them that option if they want to help or not so if you want to follow along with the steam shovel and get the week to week activities, make sure you go check out Michael's Facebook page. I will link it in the description down below. And I just want to thank you for spending the time and sharing your progress with us again. Well, it's good seeing you in your white sunglasses. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.